Katie Settle and I'm a photographer. I'm here today to talk about my upcoming exhibit, Unforgotten. I've been a photographer professionally for the past 10 years. I remember when I was a little kid, I used to uh, take my allowance and buy film and cameras, you know. Uh, one of my favorite things about photography is I really feel like you're able to give people a little piece of self-confidence. Because when people have a beautiful picture of themselves, they, they want to share it. They want to show it. And, and it's really special. The kind of photography I usually shoot is, um, I do a lot of families and weddings and anything with the heart. I love doing that. I did discover at one point though, I had a huge passion for photographing concerts. And I've photographed incredible people from B.B. King to Steven Tyler to Sheryl Crow, just a host of these incredibly talented people. But the main thing is, I, I mean, I have to be honest, it doesn't really matter what I'm photographing. It's the minute I look through that lens, the connection I get is just, it can't be denied. I, I say that I like, to, I like to photograph things that are alive. I'm the youngest of six and I have a brother I hadn't met until I was 17 because he was born with mental deficits. It's because of this the doctors recommended to my parents that he be institutionalized. About eight years ago I became a co-guardian with my parents for Andy. And that really began the spark of wanting to know more about him. I was driving one day and I passed a sign that said Mansfield. And it actually shook me to my soul because that was the name of the school where my brother was. I thought that by going to visit Mansfield, I might be able to experience a little bit more of what he had been through. And he doesn't see and he doesn't speak. Our relationship is completely nonverbal. I felt by being there, I could be in his shoes and maybe experience the slightest bit of what he had. Being in Mansfield inspired this whole exhibit. When I went inside there, I had a plan. My plan was to do it really dark. I was going to do it all in black and white, and I was going to show everybody just how terrible this place was. I wanted everybody to hate it as much as I did, hate the place where they sent people to die. But what happened was, as I started walking around there, I started to notice signs of life, signs that somebody did actually care. Little labels that said forks and spoons, the bathroom labeled with a little picture of a girl. And the one that won me over the most, that is actually the, the, the basis to this exhibit, was the curtains hanging on the wall with the little pictures of home sweet home at the bottom. There was no way to deny that this place, that they did care, that it wasn't all dark and horrible. And that actually is the basis to this project. It's not about shame and it's not about blame. It's not about telling how horrible it was. I ran into this one section that had a file cabinet was tipped over. And I actually remember standing there and kind of footing through the files on the floor, little index cards, hoping that I would find my brother's name. And I know at one point there were over 1,600 people there. But yet I still thought maybe I would see his. I would walk through the other rooms and I would wonder, could this have been Andy's room? I really felt his presence being there. And then to have my camera, I was really able to focus on items. And I swear, you just see so much more of life when you're looking through a camera. With these images, I'm able to bring people into the actual facility and show them what it was like and what it was left like. The feeling one gets there is that it was just left. Toilet paper rolls, there's toilet paper rolls still on the holder that are starting to disintegrate now. It was really interesting for me to walk around Mansfield and it was also very healing. I had taken these pictures and later got to go through them one by one. I started to see even more in the pictures than I had seen in the actual site. And the feelings they provoked were undeniable. I knew that this was much more 
than just for my own personal use. There was an opportunity here, like I had to walk in my brother's footsteps, but for others carrying the same family secret, there was now an opportunity for them to be in their own sibling shoes. So the thing is, back in the 50s, when children were born mentally retarded or severely retarded like my brother, the doctors strongly, strongly suggested, if not urged, that the parents send them to an institution. And the reason for it is they wouldn't have any kind of life if they didn't, and it would be best for the child. Well, times have changed where it almost seems barbaric to even consider that but that is the way that it was done then. I originally started this project for the siblings because I felt really badly carrying the secret around and feeling like I had turned my back on my brother. That thought that I have a brother out there that's in such a bad way and I just have nothing to do with him was horrible. And I realized we have an opportunity to change that. And I also wanted to free the other siblings that felt this way. And it's when I spoke to other siblings or when I shared the story and people told me that they had a brother or they had a sister, that made me realize it wasn't just me. And I decided I wanted to take this project and I wanted to help the siblings. But the beautiful part about it was, was by helping the siblings, I also was helping their, the brothers and sisters or family members in the institution. By brothers and sisters connecting with their forgotten relative, the relative gets advocacy. They get a voice. There's so many out there who don't have a voice and desperately need one. People are ready to hear, and this secret is done. It doesn't fit anymore. And what I want to do is I want to bust it open. And I think the best way to do that is to take this exhibit and just bring it everywhere. We have a chance here to do something really good. We have a chance to actually heal a little bit of history. And I'm hoping with my photography, through my images, people will be able to go into that space and it will become less scary and more humanized. And from there, we heal, we grow, and we change. It's awareness and acceptance that's going to do it.